keep your place here in 1 Corinthians 7, because we're coming back to it, and just turn to Proverbs chapter 5. And while you're turning there, I'm going to cover. These verses are very important because there's not a lot of places in Scripture that talk about various concepts. And what the Bible's explaining here is that one of the reasons to get married even is to avoid fornication. So what does that imply? That implies that a man and a woman have an attraction and appeal towards each other, right? You, you love each other. You want to spend time together. You want to be together. And in order to do things the right way, in order to make sure that you don't commit fornication and, and become one flesh outside of marriage, which is a very wicked sin, the way to solve this problem is to get married, to join together and commit to one another and say, we will stay together. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is because in dating principles, I think one of the important things is to make sure you're attracted to the person that you intend to marry. Because it's bringing up here to avoid fornication, you want to have a wife. If you're not attracted to someone, there's probably not going to be as much of a concern about fornication if you don't even have an attraction to that person. And I'll tell you what, that attraction will be important just in general, and again, in helping your marriage to... So this isn't, you shouldn't look at marriage as just like some business deal or some contract of like, well, I just need to love my wife and she needs to, you know, and, and it's just, there's no emotion involved or there's no love there or attraction. Uh, you're going to want to have that in your marriage. And, and what he's saying here is to, in order to avoid a fornication, let everyone have his wife. And in the verse preceding that, it says, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. So assuming you're dating somebody that you're attracted to, when you decide to start dating, you know what? It's good for a man not to touch a woman. Why? To avoid fornication. Because the other way to avoid fornication is then just to get married. But the more you get close to or touch or be intimate with, even without committing fornication, the more that's going to drive that, that desire to commit fornication. Okay, just being physical, touching, embracing, you know, holding hands. The, the more that you end up touching, the more that sparks are going to fly. Okay, and that's a fact, and that's a fact of nature, and you could say, no, that's not true. Yes, it is true. And we're going to go over fornication in a few minutes, and just so you understand how serious it is, this is something you want to make sure you keep yourself from at all costs. This is not an area you want to play around with. Okay, there's, there's, there are various levels or degrees of sin. There are. Sin, all sin is not equal. Just, just understand it. I think everyone here understands that. Not every single sin in the Bible is all equal. We want to make sure that we don't commit some really grievous sins. Definitely. I mean, we want to keep ourselves unspotted from the world. We want to keep ourselves free from all sin. But let, you know, if we're going to put time and emphasis on something, let's make sure that we never commit fornication. We never commit adultery. We never commit these things. And again, as I said, these are dating principles. But hey, you're married. Apply this to you. Instead of, instead of using the word fornication, use the word adultery. 